That's more than one of you has got these things hanging around your closet somewhere. You probably bought it back when you were in high school or junior high school and you were thinking about another career. And then that didn't work out, so it went to storage and it's been there ever since. Well, let's update the technology a little bit. A couple of weeks ago, I sprung for one of these. First glance, I don't know if I had much faith in it, but I figured I'd try it anyway. I think ideally you want to really aim for the lower magnifications of these things, by the way, unless you're really trying to step up and do some microscope work on something you know is very small. Here's my basic unit, USB only with an LED dimmer, also coming with the software on a mini CD, and then the little calibration ruler. You're really going to want this. Don't buy one without it. And now onto the matting. All plastic. Real lightweight. Well, I guess if you can stack magazines, you might be able to get some use out of this original mount, but heh, really, I'm kind of laughing. Problem here is it forces you to do things backwards. You set the magnification and then adjust the height to match the magnification. Okay, time to do a little basic calibration. What I've done here is count the ridges from the right. In this case, I'm five in from the right. So, yes, I did the same thing. I counted ridges from the left side. On my microscope, fully counterclockwise is minimum magnification. Fully clockwise is maximum magnification. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these to get some useful work out of it, this is about the minimum you want to consider if you're buying things, unlike me and making things. Because this is going to keep it nice and stable. It's all metal. It's not going to be real flimsy and moving around on you. And this will allow you to actually get some useful work out of this thing. Me, I'm going to go a little bit further on this. Okay, acknowledging the mount supplied with the microscope has just a few minor limitations. Let's see what other things need to add to my design to improve on these little deficiencies here. Okay, the number one item on my list of things to have with a digital microscope mounting is precision, stability, and repeatability. Second out of my list is to have the maximum possible adjustability and range of magnification. Next on my list, the microscope should be easily removable from the matting with no tools. I want to be able to safely store the digital microscope or switch to a different matting for a different application. Next on my list, normal usage of the microscope in the mounting won't damage the microscope. And lastly, if I decide I want my optical microscope back, I'll be able to change it back fairly quickly because I'm not going to modify the existing mounting. I'm just taking out the optical turret and replacing it with the mounting for the digital microscope. When I started looking into this, I started doing some basic research. Number one question was, okay, what is the outside diameter of it? In this case, it's 1.3 inches. And lo and behold, so is a one inch PVC coupling. And as you can see here, it fits nice and tight. It's snug enough where you got a little bit of movement, but it'll allow you to put the microscope in there and turn it upside down. It's not going to fall out. Now, this is exactly what I was looking for. Something with a little minor adjustment to it, but a real snug fit. And it's going to give me a good stable mount once I find a way to mount the PVC coupling, which is what the next part of this project is. Now I gotta make an adapter to get from this PVC coupling back to the microscope mount. Follow along, we're gonna do that here real shortly. The original optical microscope that I have here was pretty nice for its day. It was all metal, had three separate lenses, a 50, a 400, and a 900 if memory serves. I used it for a while back in high school, watched a couple microbes floating around, then decided this career wasn't for me and decided I was going to be an engineer. So off to engineering school I went and this one went in the closet. And up until I bought the digital microscope, it stayed there ever since. Okay, I removed the upper travel limit stop and then pulled the main turret out. And here we see what the back of the main turret looks like. Obviously a rack and pinion with a plastic piece that does the actual guiding. The cross-sectional area of the plastic guide is basically a truncated triangle, so this has got possibilities. And here we see a little drive gear, which is directly connected to the knobs for doing focusing. 
Now the next step is to cut or grind a little flat spot on the side of that PVC coupling. And in this case, I've got another piece of PVC. Measures about two and a half by five eighths thick and it's about one inch long. And I've glued that directly to the coupling on that flat spot I cut. Here's where you guys with access to 3D printers should be able to knock this one out of the park. Come up with a really nice little mount. And here is a microscope insertion view of the mounting. Okay, I removed a little guide plate and gear rack. It uses two little small bolts that actually bolt into the housing of the microscope turret. And I went out and found me two small screws. You notice one of them is really long, which accounts for the reason that PVC is so long. Now these two screws precisely fit the location where the two little bolts came out that originally went into the optical turret. The other thing is there are several little small spacers that originally went between the rack and pinion and the plastic guide piece. Make sure you keep those whenever you're getting into this. The next step was to use a 1 16th inch drill bit and then drill two holes using the guide plate as a template. Now I'll mount the guide plate in the gear rack on the PVC plastic. Now I'll just insert my new digital microscope mounting back into the existing housing and engage the rack and pinion gear. Now here's the view the digital microscope should see. And again, I've got it on a piece of white paper. I found out this works best. This is that little free calibration ruler that I got with my digital microscope. Hopefully you got one yours. It makes it real easy using the cooling tech software to calibrate things. If you didn't, you're really missing out. Now if you're paying attention, you'll note that this is a different mount than is shown in the previous photo. This is my latest updated mount. This wound up being the one I actually use. And actually there's been one change since this photo was taken. I've dropped the rack a half an inch. That allowed me to get the maximum range out of the mount. If you look at this photo, you'll see that the gear rack is up way higher than the pinion gear can drive it. Here's what the magnification looks like. Clearly, this magnification was out of range for this setup with this particular mounting. Here's another photo with the pinion gear properly engaged to the rack. In this case, the magnification is definitely within range of the rack and pinion and the particular mounting bracket. And here's what the magnification looks like. You'll also note that I had to take a little clear plastic extension piece off. There's simply no way you can get close enough to focus with this piece in place when you start getting the magnification back up. Here it looks like nothing has changed since the previous photo, but that's not quite true. All the adjustment is inside the microscope where the little barrel has moved up and down. You just can't see it from the outside. Here I have the microscope actually on maximum magnification, and as you'll note, it doesn't look a heck of a lot different between the two previous photos. Again, all the changes are inside the microscope with the barrel telescoping up and down. Okay, and back to the old mounting. As you can see here, things are back in focus here and I'm still engaged in the rack. I can't raise the rack much more than this or I'll lose a little pinion and I'll have the rack undrivable from this point upward. So this is about the minimum magnification I can run with the old style mounting I was using. Item number one is you got to decide what you're going to look at it on and consider that your maximum magnification. If you're looking at a 40 inch or 55 inch monitor you're going to get one magnification. If you're looking at a real small iPhone screen you're going to get another magnification. So once you decide on your standard the next step is to go ahead and start making those turns and measuring the magnification and then writing down how many ridges in you get a certain magnification at. Here I've measured a magnification for every single one of the little ridges I've turned out from the minimum side. Now I've got a magnification table versus the actual location of the microscope as you turn it out. The next step is to identify the monitor you'll be viewing on, the actual minimum and maximum magnifications for that monitor, and the particular adjustments on the microscope to reach those magnifications. In this case, starting at about 133 for a mag, five turns out, and full max magnification of 600 with, with the microscope turned open all the way. Okay, so what are the design limitations of this design? The number one limitation is about 15 millimeters square is about all you're gonna be able to get on my extended table. 
and still view the entire object you want to look at. Secondly, whatever you're looking at on the microscope needs to be pretty thin, probably less than three millimeters. Something much thicker than that, you run the risk of not being able to focus on it and running off the rack again. Third, believe it or not, lighting becomes an issue. It's just that the lights cannot properly illuminate the target because you're getting in so close and trying to focus in so tight, the lights actually shine around the target. Backlighting may be required for higher magnifications. Now, what I do like about this mount, it definitely is nice and precise, stable, and repeatable. It's everything I could hope for there. And it also will give you a good, sharp focus from about 150 magnification all the way out to the limits of the unit. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video both interesting and useful. Please keep in mind I've got two more mounting videos on the way. One that will address some of the deficiencies of this one, and some will expand on even some things I haven't even mentioned for a mount. So there are definitely more plans for microscope videos. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like. You definitely want to consider subscribing. I've got several videos on the way I'm sure you're going to want to see. Until I pass, cross again. Take care now. We'll catch you on the next video.